Why, why mediumship? Where were you interested in mediumship? Where, where, I, where I started to be interested in parapsychology, it seems it was the low-hanging fruit in a sense that it's, a par it's a, the only paranormal job, so you can find lots of mediums everywhere. Uh, in comparison to psychics, mediums are very easy to test because they want to convince you of, uh, that they're communicating with uh, DC's relatives, so they give you a lot of, uh, they try to give you a lot of evidences. Uh, there is a meaning in the sense that it's very meaningful for the people who ask the question. There's extreme emotions uh, associated with death, and this has been shown to usually uh, uh, trigger the most uh, spontaneous paranormal reports. There have been uh, prior reputable studies published. And uh, here my hypothesis is, is fairly simple. I don't want to show that life after death exists. I'm, I was just interested, is, is there anything anomalous? And so I'm going to show you uh, quickly three experiments we've been conducting. This was uh, mediumship one, in which we had mediums come to the lab and we asked them 25 questions. Uh, so we gave them a name. Uh, please give me a reading about Robert. And we asked them 25 questions about Robert. They had to enter in contact with Robert. And then this was, of course, controlled for uh, cold reading, etc. And then we compared uh, the actual target reading versus what we call a decoy reading, which is a, a reading done for somebody else. And we found that the mediums uh, were, uh, two of the mediums were statistically significant individually, and the other ones, uh, the target was uh, higher than the decoy. We also recorded the brain waves, and uh, here I'm just showing you one of the medium brain activity. This is the head of the subjects, and this is five hertz uh, oscillations. And what we found is that when the medium was accurate, um, they had, uh, in that case, they had more uh, uh, theta rhythm in this region. And we can interpret theta rhythm in this region because it's the region that comes from decision making and memory. So uh, this is all in our paper, which was published in Frontiers. And it's one of the uh, 99 most popular uh, paper on Frontier. So this was published a couple of years ago already. And then we ran a second task. So this is mediumship number two. And uh, we had this task had two parts. had a part that was online and a part that was in the lab. And that's the online part in which you go onto your website, you press the start button, and then it loads uh, the task. It asks you for your name, for uh, your gender, whether you're a practicing medium, uh, how, how well do you think you're going to perform in, uh, in this task. And then it loads a bunch of uh, images from the server. A new task is to press a button if you think the person is alive and press another button if you think the person is deceased. So for instance, that's an image. And here you press, you have five choices, definitely living, probably living, uncertain, probably deceased, and def definitely deceased. After, uh, so you have to do 200 of these. And uh, here, it's not going to do the 200. And when you're done, you get some, uh, some feedback on how you did. So here, uh, this is image 197, 198, and 200. And it, it provides you with some feedback globally. And we also had some mechanisms so people couldn't do it several times and cheat because it wasn't always the same pictures. So that's the online task. And in this task, we also took great care in choosing the pictures. These were pictures from uh, um, school, school pictures from the 1960s. So about half of the people ha uh, were, uh, had passed. We took the original picture. We first reframed the picture. So we built the software to reframe the picture. Then we converted it to black and white. And then we had another software we designed to rate the picture, whether the person was male or female, the age, perceived age, Glasses, smiling, not smiling, color of hair. We had three people rating each of the pictures. And then we got a global rating scale, combining the three people. And based on this global rating scale, we generate, we, we got 100 pictures of people who are alive, of a picture of the, the 
depicting live individuals and 100 picture depicting uh, a deceased individual. And all of these were balanced across all of these uh, categories. This is the result of the online uh, task on about on the 100 participants. And so this was the, and this is uh, here a robot that's just, the red one is a robot that just was clicking randomly on, on the website. So this was the first part, the online part, and we did it in the lab as well with 12 professional mediums. They had 400 pictures in the same, so same type of task. Is this person alive or is it deceased? And we also recorded EEG. This is the performance of the medium. 50, 50 is chance level. And we can see several mediums are statistically uh, significant independently. And the odds against chance if we consider all, uh, all of the mediums. Some of them were below chance level, like uh, number 11 and 12. But the odds against chance was uh, 1 in 200 of uh, being above chance. We also had individual results. We actually had three database. Some pictures were very old, some pictures were uh, less old, and we, we had newer pictures. So we tried to see if they were uh, better. They tend to be better on the newer pictures. And we had some interpretation about that. Uh, we also tried to uh, use artificial intelligence, here machine learning, to, based on the, all, the cate all the features of the image, to try to classify them automatically. Can uh, artificial intelligence just uh, uh, take the picture and put it in the right category or not? And here we found, it, no, it can't, at least with the limited uh, number of features we extracted from the image. In terms of uh, brain waves, we found some signature early, uh, visual or early visual activity that was mostly uh, located, this is the 3D head of the subject, this is like the nose direction, this is the back of the head. It's just different views here. So mostly uh, uh, located in the parietal occipital areas and uh, the difference we found was like early visual difference in incorrect versus correct um, image, which we interpreted in, in this case as uh, a very early intuitive uh, response below conscious level. This was again published in Frontiers and was one of the, uh, uh, the most viewed article on Frontiers in 97th percentile until it was retracted by the, by the editor and the reason for attraction was uh, uh, assertion were not sufficiently matched by level of verifiable evidence. We asked what that meant. Uh, they never answered uh, to us. And then uh, we complained to the Committee of Ethics for publishing, but uh, a journal can basically do whatever uh, they want. And then we realized, actually, the editor-in-chief uh, was Hoke and Aiken, and um, Etzel Cardena had published a paper that showed like some people as just a, a, a harassing Psy researcher and he was one of them. So we just got actually unlucky because when we submitted the paper, we submitted to a journal in Frontiers that's called uh, Frontiers in Perception Science. And this journal is classified in both in Frontier in Psychology and Frontier in Neuroscience. And we thought, well, you just have to click a button. We thought, well, we'll pick the affiliation to Frontiers in neuroscience because it has a higher impact factor, so we are greedy. But it also has Holke uh, Ankeren as the editor-in-chief. And so if you had picked the other one, it probably wouldn't have been rejected. So we republished the paper eventually in Explore. And now, so this was mediumship number two, which I just described. And now we have mediumship number three which is basically very, very similar to mediumship number two. And the main difference is uh, we had 12 professional mediums and 12 controls, so we have a control group. And then we have three categories instead of, uh, instead of two. And the primary of the previous database is people tend to pass all the time, so that just uh, corrupts the database. So here we, uh, we found a database where uh, people had to answer one of three questions. Is this person, did this person pass a heart attack, car accidents, or a death by firearm? And we also upgraded our uh, EEG system. The results, so 12 mediums, 12 controls. We ran a freeway ANOVA on the response correct, incorrect, the groups, medium control, 
and the type of, uh, of death. And uh, we were happy to see uh, that we got a significant effect for the type of response and that uh, corrects were uh, actually higher than incorrect, so the uh, number of detection of correct was, uh, uh, was higher. And then we look at interaction between variables, and uh, there was interaction with groups, which was good, uh, but it appears that actually the controls were the ones which were driving the effect. And so that's, that's visible here, uh, for example, where we see that uh, the control showed the strongest difference between correct and incorrect compared to the medium. And there was no other interaction effect on the, on the freeway ANOVA. So these are the individual uh, results here for all the mediums. Uh, when it's in green, it means it's significant in the expected direction. When it's in red, it's significant in the opposite uh, direction. And our interpretation of these results is, uh, um, and we, we spoke about that with other uh, SI researchers, for instance, it might be performance anxiety as the medium come to the lab, and also lack or, or of uh, or what's called organizational closure. There's no reason for them to, uh, to try to read, to try to access that information other than for the purpose of the experiment compared to when somebody comes to see them, there's really organizational closure with uh, the, the person, the, the client, that comes to see them and want the information, which wasn't the case here. Uh, for control, what did control perform uh, uh, so well? For first, there's no performance anxiety. They are not supposed to do well, so we, and so they don't. And, and also, uh, maybe better organizational closure. They are close to the organization. That's how we recruited them on our, uh, on, on our websites. And if anybody has other interpretation, I mean, we are happy to hear them. So uh, thank you for your attention. We haven't processed the brainwave data yet, so we're, we're still working on that.